Hello everyone, this is Shravanti, working as assistant professor, Department of Chemistry in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about Persian bank term, electrochemistry and corrosion. So here we discussed about long answer questions. So in this electrochemistry first question is, what is galvanic cell? Explain the construction of galvanic cell with the electrode reactions. So first what is meaning of galvanic cell? So best example of galvanic cell is Daniel cell or Daniel cell is a typical example of galvanic cell. So it, uh, galvanic cell it is an electrochemical cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. It is called electrochemical cell or galvanic cell. Best example of galvanic cell is Daniel cell. So how to construct this Daniel cell? So this Daniel cell consists of a beaker, contain, it consists of two electrodes first, zinc electrode and copper electrode. So zinc electrode dipped in zinc sulfate solution, copper electrode dipped in copper sulfate solution. For example, see in this image here, this is a zinc electrode, it is, it is dipped in this zinc sulfate solution. And this is another electrode is copper, it is dipped in this copper sulfate solution. So this Daniel cell it consists of two electrodes zinc and copper. So zinc electrode dipped in zinc sulfate solution, copper electrode dipped in copper sulfate solution. So usually according to electrochemical series in zinc and copper, zinc acts as anode and copper acts as cathode. So zinc when we dip in zinc sulfate solution, so this half cell is called oxidation half cell. Oxidation half cell, whereas copper electrode generally acts as cathode according to electrochemical series in zinc and copper, zinc always acts as anode, copper acts as cathode. So copper electrode different copper sulfate solution, so it acts as a cathode that means this half cell acts as a reduction half cell. Reduction half cell and these two half cells are connected by a salt bridge. So these two half cells, oxidation half cell and reduction half cell, these two half cells are connected by a salt bridge. So here salt bridge is a inverted U-shaped tube. It is a inverted U-shaped glass tube. It containing saturated solution of some electrolytes such as KCl, KNO3, ammonium nitrate in agar agar gel. So what is the use of this uh, salt bridge? So it connects two half cells and it maintains electrical neutrality in this cell. It maintains electrical neutrality and it connects two half cells. That is the main use of salt bridge. And these two electrodes are connected through voltmeter through a wire. So this is the construction of galvanic cell or Daniel cell. So here See, it's the salt which allows the flow of ions to pass through mm -hmm. it when the flow of electrical current takes place, which allows the ions from one half cell to another half cell, not electrons. Because it completes the electrical circuits and maintains the electrical neutrality of half cell solution. So when the circuit is completed, electric current flows through the external circuits indicated by ammeter. So simply we say is that zinc electrode acts as anode, copper electrode acts as cathode. So when we dip in zinc electrode, zinc sulfate solution, it acts as oxidation half cell. Copper electrode dip in copper sulfate solution, here it is acts as reduction half cell. So these two half cells connected by a salt bridge, which allows the ions from one cell to another cell. That means it maintains electrical neutrality. And these two electrodes are connected by a wire to ammeter or voltmeter. So here through this wire it moves electrons from one electrode to another electrode. So here zinc is oxidized to zinc plus two ions. Usually zinc acts as anode. So at anodic area which reactions takes place? Oxidation. So oxidation means loss of electrons. So zinc oxidized to give zinc plus two ions which go into the solution. So and therefore zinc gradually lost its weight. That means it acts as oxidation half cell. So that means zinc acts as anode. When it is undergoes oxidation, 
it gives zinc plus 2 zinc metal ions and loss of two electrons at anodic area so this is the oxidation reaction so at anodic area oxidation reaction takes place so in this daniel cell zinc undergoes oxidation then gives zinc metal ions and loss of two electrons next the electrons released at the zinc electrode move towards copper electrode through the external circuit so these electrons are accepted by the copper ions in the solution so get reduced so copper acts as cathode so it at cathodic area copper reduced to copper copper metal and gain of two electrons then deposit there as copper so here this is a copper uh, at cathodic area which reactions takes place reduction reactions takes place so copper metal ions gain of two electrons and deposit there as copper this is the reduction reaction takes place in this daniel cell so the oxidation of zinc occurs at anode and reduction of copper plus 2 occurs at cathode so the flow of electrons from negative terminal to positive terminal that means anode to cathode zinc to copper so here this uh, galvanic cell or daniel cell represented as zinc acts as anode and here uh, zinc sulfate zinc electrode dipped in zinc sulfate solution so electrode and electrolyte solution separated by a single vertical line and next copper acts as cathode it is dipped in copper sulfate solution so electrode and electrolyte solution separated by a single vertical line and these two half cells are separated by two vertical lines this is indicates that salt bridge so this is a representation of galvanic cell so working function just to discussed already at anodic area zinc undergoes oxidation then gives zinc metal ions and loss of two electrons so at cathodic area copper metal ions gain of two electron and deposit there as copper so overall reaction is zinc and copper so it gives zinc loss of zinc metal ions and deposit there as copper so how to represent this cell zinc zinc sulfate electrode and electrolyte sol solution this is ox oxidation half cell this is a oxidation half cell and here this is a reduction half cell so these two half cells are separated by two vertical lines that is indicates that salt bridge so what is the use of salt bridge Shallows the ions from one half cell to another half cell. That means it maintains electrical neutrality in between two half cells. So just now already we discussed representation of electrochemical cell or galvanic cell. So it consists of two electrodes. One is anode and another one is cathode. So anode is written on the left hand side. So you see anodic reactions written on left hand side and cathodic reactions written on right hand side so these two are separated by a vertical line that means electrode and electrolyte solution separated by a single vertical line or semicolon uh, for example a zinc electrode zinc sulfate solution so electrode and electrolyte solution separated by a single vertical line and two half cells are separated by a salt bridge so which is indicated by two vertical lines so two half cells separated by a two vertical lines that means it is salt bridge so which is indicated to two vertical lines so final representation of galvanic cell is this one zinc zinc sulfate and copper sulfate copper these two are separated by two vertical lines that is indicated that salt bridge so this is the construction working function of galvanic cell and next question is describe the construction and working of lead acid battery so write the discharging charging reactions and mention its applications and limitations so here lead acid storage battery is the best example of secondary battery so what is the meaning of secondary battery so the cell reactions are reversible this battery uses number of cycles through charging and discharging so here the cell reaction can be reversed by passing direct electric current in opposite direction so the, the secondary battery may be used through a large number of cycles of 
discharging and charging so the best example of secondary battery is lead acid storage battery nickel cadmium battery and lithium ion cells or lithium ion battery so your secondary batteries or secondary cells are used in cars trains motors electronic clocks power stations and laboratories etc so here in this lead acid storage battery it is the best example of secondary battery so in this battery anode is lead plate so lead plates are acts as anode lead dioxide plates acts as cathode and h2so4 dilute h2so4 acts as electrolyte and how to construct this lead acid storage battery so if number of cells connected in a series is called battery cell means it consists of only one anode and cathode so battery means it consists of number of anodes and number of cathodes so the number of cells connected in a series is called battery so in this lead acid storage battery is one of the most common common battery that is used in automobiles so one of its electrode is made of lead that means here lead axis anode and the other electrode is made of lead dioxide it acts as cathode so a number of lead plates are connected in parallel a number of lead dioxide plates connected also parallel so various plates are separated for the adjacent one by insulator like rubber or glass fiber so this is the construction of lead acid storage battery so here the entire combination is dipole dilute h2so4 having density is 1.30 g per ml so see here this red color indicates that lead which acts as anode so lead plates are arranged in parallel and lead dioxide plates which are acts as cathode these plates also arranged in parallel so these two are separated by insulator like glass fiber or rubber so separated by insulator like glass or rubber or glass fiber and this total setup is dipole dilute h2so4 tax as a electrolyte the density is 1.30 g per ml so here the cell may be represented as lead axis anode and here lead sulfate form precipitated anodic area and h2so4 acts as a electrolyte and lead dioxide acts as cathode so the lead acid storage battery represented as lead as pbso4 and this two lines indicate salt bridge and h2so4 acts as a, a electrolyte and pbo2 acts as a cathode so working function so it is a secondary battery so it's involved during its discharging and charging so the cell reactions during discharging so uh, discharging process at the anode oxidation reactions takes place so at uh, oxidation means here lead acts as anode so lead undergoes oxidation then gives pb2 plus plus loss of two electrons so this pb2 plus reacts with sulfate from the electrolyte what is the electrolyte we are using here h2so4 dilute h2so4 so this pb plus 2 reacts with sulfate then forms PbSO4 precipitate at anodic area. So, what is the overall reaction? Pb plus SO4 to minus gives PbSO4. It is anodic reaction, so loss of two electrons. So, this is the overall reaction at anodic area in discharging process. So, at cathodic area, reduction reactions takes place. So, which one is acts as cathode? PbO2. so pbo2 reacts with h plus and so4 from the electrolyte and gain of two electrons then it forms pbso4 precipitated cathodic area so here combining these two reactions uh, one can determine the overall reaction is total net reaction during discharging process pb acts as anode and pbo2 acts as cathode and this two is which is used up electrolyte during discharging process so most important point is during discharging process the concentration of h2so4 is decreases 
and here during the discharging process it forms precipitate lead sulfate precipitate formed at anodic and cathodic areas and loss of energy because discharging while you are using this battery energy is decreases so cell reaction during recharging so here recharging so when we are using this battery charging will be decreases that means it needs charging so the net reaction during charging is to reverse reaction we passed electricity opposite direction so pbso4 precipitate plus 2h2o we passed energy opposite direction so in that case lead uh, deposited at anodic area lead dioxide deposited at cathodic area and hso4 concentration is increases so during discharging process concentration of hso4 is decreases and during charging process concentration of hso4 is increases so here how the charging reactions is the exact opposite of discharging reaction we observed that so what are the advantages of lead acid storage battery so it is made easily so it produces very high current and the self discharging rate is low when compared to other rechargeable batteries so it also acts as effectively at low temperature these are the main advantages of lead acid storage battery and next disadvantages of lead acid storage battery so your recycling of this battery causes environmental hazards so mechanical strain and normal bumping reducing reduces the battery capacity now let's discuss applications of lead acid storage battery so this battery mainly preferred in automobiles and also used in electrical vehicles gas engine ignition telephone exchanges electronic trans, uh, trains mines laboratories hospitals or broadcasting stations automobiles and power stations we prefer this battery they are using this battery and next question is list cathodic protection explain sacrificial cathodic protection method so the main principle involved in this cathodic protection or it is also called as electrochemical protection is to force the metal to behave like a cathode because corrosion always concentrated anodic area so when we convert that material into cathode to protect from corrosion so to at cathodic area general reduction reactions takes place but do not affect the cathode so here the cathodic protection means the main principle involved in this uh, method is uh, to force the metal to behave like a cathode to force the metal to behave like a cathode so there are two types of cathodic protections are there sacrificial anodic protection method and impressed current cathodic protection method so in this question we'll discuss explain only sacrificial anodic protection method so here sacrificial anodic protection means in this method anode is sacrificed anode is sacrificed to protect the base metal from corrosion so in this method metallic structure to be protect to behave like a cathode by connecting with more active metal that means usually acts as anode so here wantedly we connect more active metal to basic metallic structure so in this case uh, to force the metal to behave like a cathode that means basic metallic structure we can protect it from corrosion so the artificially made anode sir gradually gets corroded protecting the original metallic structure so hence the process is otherwise known as sacrificial anodic protection method so anode is sacrificed to protect the base metal from corrosion the best example of sacrificial anode sir aluminum zinc magnesium are usually used as artificial anodes so for example you see so this is a basic metallic structure which we can protect this is we this can be we can protected from corrosion so wantedly we connected with more active metal that is zinc or magnesium sheets so in this case corrosion concentrate more anodic method this basic metallic structure to be protected from corrosion so this method is called sacrificial anodic protection method so in this method we best example is protection of underground cables and pipelines from soil corrosion protection of 
its underground cables and pipelines from soil corrosion when we connected with more active metals like zinc magnesium aluminum sheets etc and one more example is protection of ships and boats from marine corrosion so generally here the hull of the ship is made up of iron so generally usually it is easily undergoes corrosion but we bondingly we connected with uh, uh, zinc or magnesium sheets hanging around the hull of the ship so always corrosion concentrated at this area so basic metallic structure to be protected so this method is used for protection of underground cables and pipelines from soil corrosion and also used for protection of uh, ships and boat hull from marine corrosion and also used for prevention of rusty water by inserting magnesium sheets or rods into domestic water tanks or water boilers and uh, next question is what is hard dipping give the importance of tinning in corrosion control so hard dipping it is one of the coating coating material so hard dipping process applicable to the metals having high melting point than the coating metal usually base metals are having high melting points so we applied coating metals are having usually low melting points so applying low melting metals on base metal which are having high melting points that is called hard dipping so it consists of immersing well cleaned base metal in a bath containing molten coating metal and a flux layer so the flux cleans the surface of the base metal and prevents the oxidation of the molten coating metal the best example is coating of zinc tin lead aluminum on what are the base metals we are using here iron and steel surfaces iron or steel surface generally used uh, commonly used materials construction materials so these are available as cost also so most widely used hard dipping process are galvanizing and tinning so what is the meaning of galvanizing so galvanizing means here applying zinc coating on base metal so here base metal means generally we are using iron or steel so first is iron or steel article which we can protect it from corrosion so that metal is cleaned with dilute acid like h2so4 here maintaining temperature range is 60 to 90 degree centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes so here therefore it removes scale or rust or any other impurities present on it we can remove in this then after dip molten zinc bath here maintaining temperature range is 425 to 450 degree centigrade and it is completely covered with ammonium chloride flux so what is the use of the flux it prevents from oxidation so when the iron piece is taken out is coated with a thin layer of zinc so and to remove excess of zinc then pass it through the a pair of rollers so it is annealed at a temperature of 450 degree centigrade and then cooled slowly and it will get galvanized iron sheet prevents from corrosion so here iron sheet when we dip in this dilute acid solution here maintaining temperature range is 60 to 90 degree centigrade so in this case we can remove impurities next it is cleaned with water dried in hot air chamber next it is dipped in this molten zinc bath at 425 to 430 degree centigrade and it is covered with ammonium chloride flux it prevents from oxidation next it pass it through the pair of rollers so in this case excess of zinc is removed finally we we'll get galvanized iron sheet this is called galvanizing so what is the use of galvanizing it is used to protect roofing sheets pipes wires screws etc for example see here galvanized nuts or bolts to prevent from corrosion but what is the disadvantage of galvanizing so zinc is toxic so that galvanized utensils we cannot be used for preparing storing food so because zinc dissolved in dilute acids to form highly toxic compounds so that's why we cannot use galvanized utensils for cooking food for storing food materials because it is toxic in acids tinning 
So here the process of coating of tin over the iron or steel articles to protect it from corrosion. So tin coating on base metal like iron or steel is called tinning. So tin is a noble metal than iron. So therefore it is a more resistance to chemical attack. So in this process at first iron sheet here also cleaned with H2SO4. Here, see here. So this is iron wire. So when it is dipped in this acid solution, it is remove, in this case it remove impurities. Next it is passed in this molten tin bath, coating bath. Coating bath. It is covered with zinc chloride flux. So what is the use of flux? It prevents from oxidation. Next it pass it through the palm oil chamber. It is also used for prevents from oxidation. Next you pass it through the pair of rollers. In this case, excess of tin is removed. Finally, you will get tin plated iron sheet. This is called tinning. So, what are the advantages or uses of tinning? So, tin coated utensils are used for storing food. But zinc coating galvanizing utensils, we cannot use it for storing food material. This is the main advantage of tinning. But what are the disadvantages? Tin has less negative E0 value than iron. So it acts as a cathode. So in this case it acts as a cathode means remaining metal, base metal acts as in that case anode. So corrosion easily undergo um, that material easily undergoes corrosion. So even a small crack or punctured of coating can lead to uh, intense corrosion. So in this session we will learn about uh, what are the important questions of electrochemical cell and hard dipping methods, surface coating and cathodic protection. So we discussed all these important questions which are in this electrochemistry and corrosion. I hope understood all. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.